This is McFly Angler. starts now. To start we will need some hooks and also a small double barrel popper. So let's make sure that the hooks are the proper size. I will be using the Gamagatsu B10S in size 4. With half of the hook eye sticking out past the front of the popper head, you can see that there is still enough room on the back end to tie in some materials. And also enough hook gap to get a decent hook set. With the longer shank streamer hooks like these from Risen Fly, you can see that you most likely will never have an issue with room to tie in materials, and the hook point sits far enough back that you will always get some good hook sets. Okay, place the hook securely in your vise. These popper heads do not come with pre-drilled holes, so let's make our own hole. Push a bodkin through the bottom portion of the popper head and ensure that it's lined up to come out the back, where there is a small indent for a hole. Okay, now we will want to color up the popper. I will be using four separate colors, a chartreuse, which I have in this chart pack ad marker, also an orange in chart pack, then I have yellow and black in sharpies. You can use just about any permanent type marker for these. Before we place the popper head on the hook, let's color up the mouth here. Today I will be coloring the mouth bright yellow. So let's use the yellow sharpie for this. Okay, now let's put the popper head on the hook shank. This will widen up the hole you made and make the next steps easier. Okay, let's pull the popper head off now and grab some thread. To lay some thread wraps down, let's grab some thick thread like this Vivis 140. And today I'm using chartreuse. Measure out the end of the popper head so the hook eye is about halfway past the bottom of the popper head. Mark with your fingers. And then tie in the thread at that measurement. Now we want to build up a thread base on the fly. Let's go up to about a hook eye length shy of the eye of the hook and then back down. Now let's build up a fairly large thread bump at the back end of the thread wraps. Then come up to just in front of the bump. Now cut off some stiff fishing line like this 25 pound fluorocarbon. Tie this in perpendicular to the hook shank with X wraps, wrap in front and behind the mono to lock it in tight. Then advance your thread to in front of the mono and make another thread bump, about as wide as the hook eye. Then whip finish. Also cut the mono short. Basically we're just making a flat spot so the foam popper head will not spin when we glue it on. Now we need some gel type super glue, like this Loctite. Squeeze a liberal amount on the thread wraps all over. Then put your fingers at the back of the thread wraps there to keep the popper head from pushing too far back and then slide the popper head on. Take it out of the vise and adjust it quickly before the glue dries, ensuring that it is not canted sideways. As you can see, you want the hook eye sticking out a bit and not right up against the foam. This will make it easier to tie them on when fishing them. Now let's start coloring up the popper once the glue dries. I'm making this a fire tiger color, so let's make the bottom half yellow. Then before the yellow fully dries, grab some of the orange and make a little dab in the front portion of the popper. Then streak that back with your finger to blend it into the yellow a bit. Let's let that dry before moving on to the chartreuse. Let's go ahead and color the top half of the chartreuse. You can go into the yellow slightly if you want. And you can also break apart the transition from the top to the bottom with jagged lines like so. Or just color it straight across. It's up to you. So I don't have a spray brush system like some do. So this is just how I color up my poppers. Finish laying the chartreuse color all over the back of the fly. And then let that dry for a few minutes before adding lines with the black sharpie to give that signature fire tiger look. Get creative and color this fly however you want. After all, this is going to be your fly. Let's let that dry before grabbing some eyes. I will be using these 5mm size living eyes in the ice color today. Grab two, then add a dot of gel type super glue into the cavity of the eye. Don't add too much, just a small dot is all you need. Then place the eye inside the cavity. This might require a bit of effort to have it seat properly in the cavity, but as you can see, it can. Okay, now the same thing for the other side. Let's let that dry before moving on to coating the popper with flexible resin. For that task, my favorite stuff is Solares Flex Formula. It's a UV resin that stays flexible, perfect for popper heads. Squeeze a little over the eyes to fill in any spaces in the cavity, and you can use a bodkin to move that around if you want to. Then cure that hard. 
and do the same thing with the other eye cavity. Okay, now that the eyes are on secure, let's go ahead and resin up the front lip. We will need to keep the resin out of the hook eye, and lead-free wire is perfect for this. Cut off a small amount, and then put it in the hook eye and twist it so it stays put. Put the popper head angled upward in your vise like so. Now we need a disposable paintbrush and a small throwaway type cup. Squeeze some resin into the popper head. Not too much, but also you need enough to coat the whole head. You will learn how much over a few poppers. Then use this paintbrush to coat the entire popper mouth with resin, getting in every nook and cranny. Once smooth, turn the fly in the vise so it's angled downward and ensure that the wire is also hanging down. Then cure it with your UV light. Let's remove the wire by untwisting it and pulling it out of the hook eye. Now there will always be a little resin left over, so remove that with a bodkin or scissors. See there, the hook eye is now clear of debris. Okay, let's coat the rest of the popper with resin. Squeeze some over the whole popper head. Again, not too much and not too little. Use the brush again to smooth out that resin. I like to go circular around the whole popper and also brush forward. If you have too much, you can use the side of the cup to wipe off any excess resin, which I actually did right here. Once it's smoothed out and the resin has coated the entire popper with a thin layer, then spin it to smooth it out and keep it from dripping while curing it with your UV light. This does cure quickly with the right light, but might take a little bit more time since there is so much resin to cure. 30 seconds or so with this Solarez UV light is plenty though. As you can see, the head is now fully coated and it's smooth. This will keep the finish clean and water from soaking into the foam as well as allowing it to stay buoyant and brightly colored through many fish strikes. Okay, let's finish up the popper by tying in the tail. I will be switching to a finer thread, this 6 ot Vivas in hot yellow. Start the thread right behind the popper head and snip or snap off the waist. Now we need some marabou. In fact, I'm using mini marabou, or like Whiting calls it, chickaboo. I'm gonna use one chartreuse and one grizzly chartreuse feather. Line up the tips of the two feathers. Then I like to wet the feathers to make the tie-in easier. Measure this out on the back of the fly to about a hook shank length, then cut off the excess feather at the measurement and tie it in directly behind the popper head, ensuring that the grizzly feathers are over top of the plain chartreuse feathers. Now we need some crystal flash. Cut off two strands. Tie in the flash extending out slightly shy of the chartreuse tail on the side of the tail like so. Then pull the forward facing strands rearward and tie on the other side of the tail and then cut off the excess flash to the same length on both sides. Now for some chartreuse soft tackle. Grab the tip of the feather and stroke the remaining feathers rearward. Cut the tip off leaving a small tie in point. Tie this in on the hook. While pulling fibers rearward, wrap this hackle around the hook shank three to four times and then capture it with your thread. Cut off the excess feather and then pull the fibers rearward and tie back up over the feather slightly. Now for some rubber legs. These chartreuse speckled silicone bass jig skirts will work perfectly. Cut off two pieces. Tie these in on top of the hook shank with the rear portion slightly longer than the front. Split the rear legs so that they are tied in slightly on the side like so and then pull the forward facing legs rearward and tie those in slightly on the side as well. Now for a collar. And you want some stiffer fibers. This rooster cape and grizzly chartreuse will work perfectly. Find a feather where the fibers extend out slightly past the hook gap. Then pull off the fuzzy fibers at the base of the feather and cut off all but a small piece of stem to tie in. Tie in the feather perpendicular to the hook shank and then cut off the excess stem. Now proceed to make three to four wraps with the hackle around the hook to form a collar. Capture the feather with your thread and then cut off the waist. Pull the collar rearward and make a few wraps in front of it. Then whip finish your fly. Actually, I like to make two whip finishes here. To fully secure the fly, let's add another drop of gel super glue to the whip finish knot. You can now cut the legs to your desired length, leave them longer if you want or shorter but I like to make the rear legs about as long as a marabou tail, and then the front legs slightly shorter so they stick out sideways like frog legs. And there we have it, the finished small bass popper colored to a fire tiger coloration. Let me know in the comments section what you think of this popper and what color poppers you like to fish for bass. 
As you all know, I've gotten you all discounts from www.risenfly.com. They manufacture all their own hooks, rods, reels, fly tying tools, and other gear for fly fishing. Not only are the prices at their shop very good already, but like I said, they're offering you 15% off of your first order with them. So go to www.risenfly.com and type in McFly at checkout for a discount on your entire cart. I want to also thank all of my patrons who support me. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help support this channel and also get some great perks like early access to my videos, participate in live streams, and even discounts on purchasing flies I tie and sell. Yes, that's right. I do sell flies hand tied by me. If you want to order, you can do so through Patreon for that discount or just place an order by finding me on Instagram or Facebook. Or if you don't use social media, then you can go to my YouTube homepage, click the about section, and then click view email address and email me with your order. I want to also thank all of you who share all my videos and your continued support by hitting the like button and being my subscriber. Thank you for making these videos possible. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.